Sitcoms need a lovable core group of characters. Families and friends are the most common options, but Gilligan's Island used a group of castaways. There were also a few cast members who felt marooned. Tina Louise was typecast into roles like the ditzy Ginger Grant. She had to leave, but it didn't stop the franchise. Other actresses had to take on the mantle of Ginger in subsequent TV movies and animated series. Keep watching to learn about who replaced Tina Louise in Gilligan's Island. Some Basics Gilligan's Island was a 30-minute episodic series created and produced by Sherwood Schwartz, airing from 1964 to 67. The plot was simple, with a group of castaways marooned on a deserted island. They spent every episode trying to get back to civilization. All their attempts were hilariously bumbled, usually Gilligan's fault. The sitcom was divisive. Viewers loved it, and it often finished in the top 10 of ratings. Critics thought it was too goofy. Even the cast had differing opinions. How Tina Louise Became Ginger Grant Tina always wanted to be taken seriously in deeper, more dramatic roles. She moved to Italy in 1960 and starred in popular films like The Siege of Syracuse and Garibaldi. She enrolled in the Actors Studio Drama School in New York once she returned to the U.S., studying under Lee Strasberg. After that, she had a guest role in the sitcom The Real McCoys and the film For Those Who Think Young. She returned to Broadway in an acclaimed role in the musical Fade Out, Fade In. She left the stage to become Ginger Grant on Gilligan's Island in 1964. Kit Smith played her secretary in the pilot, but turned it down for the full show. Jane Mansfield got the first offer when the character was revamped to be a movie star. She also turned it down. Tina Louise played her from 1964 to 67. It was her most famous role, but not one of her favorites. Why Tina Left Gilligan's Island got Tina plenty of attention. She started appearing in magazines and was named the world's most beautiful redhead by the National Art Council. Hollywood started looking for her to play the love interests of several major stars, including Robert Taylor and Richard Widmark. The problem was, this wasn't the type of attention she wanted. She wanted to be taken seriously in the industry, and being Ginger Grant didn't help that. It led to her getting typecast into ditzy slapstick roles. There were also rumors of struggles behind the scenes between the cast. Tina allegedly feuded with Bob Denver, who played Gilligan. He'd apparently spread a rumor that she'd snuck into her boyfriend Les Crane's dressing room for a night of passion. She denied it and was deeply offended. Tina married Les in 1966, and they had a daughter named Caprice in 1970. They split in 1971 after five years together. The pressure of fame was too much, and she needed to get her career and life in check. She did find other roles after departing the show, including films like The Wrecking Crew, Kojak, The Stepford Wives, and the TV movie Nightmare in Batham County. Tina's made her feelings about the show clear, but her anger softened over time. She vowed never to return to Gilligan's Island, but had no problem getting back together with her co-stars from time to time. Judith Baldwin Judith Baldwin was born March 26, 1946. She was Miss New Mexico in 1965 and second runner-up in the Miss USA pageant that same year. She earned 46 screen credits between 1969 and 2005. Her first official credit was a guest spot on I Dream of Jeannie, and her last was the lead in Every Secret Thing. She had experience working with Tina Louise in The Stepford Wives and replaced her as Ginger in 1978 in Rescue from Gilligan's Island. She also played her in The Castaways on Gilligan's Island the next year. Who else played Ginger? Gilligan's Island was such a beloved sitcom that executives didn't want it to end. There were plenty of spin-offs and TV movies to keep the journey going. Their plots were all different but kept the same central characters, even though they weren't always played by the same actors. There were several gingers and not a single one appeared in every incarnation of the franchise. Rescue from Gilligan's Island Rescue from Gilligan's Island was a TV movie. There were two parts, part one airing on NBC October 14, 1978, and part two on the 21st. This was one of the first appearances of Judith Baldwin as Ginger Grant. It showed Gilligan finding part of a satellite dish and turning it into a necklace. He then makes a barometer that tells him a storm is coming to the island. The castaways build huts to protect themselves and get carried out to sea. They make it to the shipping lanes and are finally rescued. Gilligan gets interviewed on TV and then tries to get his necklace back. A subplot shows Gilligan and the skipper opening another boat charter service. The castaways sign off that he wasn't at fault for the first accident. 
They set sail and end up marooned on the exact same island. The Castaways on Gilligan's Island This was another TV movie meant to begin where Rescue from Gilligan's Island ended. It aired on May 3, 1979. Judith Baldwin was ginger again. The group of castaways have the worst problem they've had to fix yet. Their water supply is contaminated by the storm. Gilligan has to find another water source. He finds a WW2 airplane hangar with planes that had been hidden in the jungle. The professor makes a working plane out of the fallen parts, and everyone starts to fly off the island. That is until the plane begins to develop engine problems. The professor advises them to lighten the load, but Gilligan falls while he's trying to clear out the cargo and lands back on the island. The group can't leave him there. The engine falls off when they go back to get him, but the professor realizes they would have dropped into the ocean if it had fallen off. Gilligan accidentally saved their lives. A Navy captain saw their plane on his radar and pinpointed where they landed. He takes them back to civilization, and Gilligan's Island gets marked on a map so no one is ever stranded there again. A secondary storyline was meant as a pilot for another series similar to The Love Boat. It showed Mr. Howell running a resort on the island, with the skipper and Gilligan running a boat back and forth. Other popular actors appeared like Tom Bosley, Myra and Henry Elliott, and Ronnie Scribner. But the new show never got picked up. The Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island one of the most world-famous basketball teams and a group of TV castaways might seem like an odd match, but that's what this third TV movie attempted to accomplish. It continued the plot of the last one and also showed Judith Baldwin as Ginger. The Globetrotters' plane has to make an emergency landing on the island resort. The skipper and Gilligan rescue them. They challenge the team to a game of basketball, which they lose handily. A business rival named J.J. Pearson finds out the island contains supremium, an ore that gives off energy. He wants the island for himself to mine it. When he can't scare off the staff, he sabotages them and gets all their signatures except Thurston IV. J.J. agrees to leave if the Globetrotters will play a game of basketball against his team of robots, the new Invincibles. Gilligan gives them a pep talk and they win. They realize at the last second that J.J. loaded up the Supremium onto his yacht while they were playing. The professor tells him it's unstable in its current form and will explode, which it does. Everyone on the island thanks the Globetrotters for their help before they leave. And finally, there were two animated series. The New Adventures of Gilligan ran from 1974 to 75, and Jane Webb provided the voice of the movie star instead of Judith Baldwin. Gilligan's Planet aired 1982 to 83. In that one, Don Wells was both the voice of Ginger and Marianne. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite episode of Gilligan's Island? Who was your favorite cast member? Let us know in the comments section below.